What are the potential national and cyber security risks of connected or smart vehicles? Thanks, Senator. Like any um, connected vehicle in the Australian market, I think the analysis says by 2030, 95% of vehicles will be connected. Uh, and so you take the step back and think about the data that is acquired and potentially provided to um, people who manage and own connected vehicle manufacturers and, and the information that goes back. So that's kind of one area of potential cyber mm. risk, um, more data acquisition and um, aggregation risk, I suppose, in one sense. Uh, equally, the um, ability to change software may well provide um, some sort of risk if it's updated not in accordance with standards or in accordance with um, what the, the vehicle is intended to do. So a range of different cyber risks, both for people who connect their mobile devices into the, the car, for example, um, but also at the, I guess, the manufacturing and software level. Mm. Um, it, there's been media reports about the ability of some of these vehicles to listen in to conversations uh, that occur in the vehicle because they have audio recording. Is that one of the risks? Uh, cer certainly is, and I think Choice uh, also did a, a study of the range of vehicles in Australia and the data that is acquired, and we, we obviously are looking at connected vehicles more generally as well. Mm. And some of these vehicles have external cameras and collect video footage of where they travel. Is that a relevant risk? Uh, it could be, yes. Um, including you know, random passers-by or faci sensitive facilities or uh, sensitive locations? Uh, it could be, yes. Um, I note the Chinese government has banned uh, some uh, EV vehicles from their sensitive national security sites as a mitigation measure. Can you confirm that, um, to your knowledge? Well, I've, I've read <coughs> reporting about that, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, uh, the movement of these vehicles around our cities can be tracked as well. They can be, um, they have mapping software, for example, that can track their movements? Uh, yes. And you said earlier, you alluded to ownership earlier. Um, are you suggesting that the country of origin where they're made and owned is a relevant consideration in the risk? Uh, you, you may well be, uh, but equally, if 95% of connected vehicles will be, con vehicles will be connected, there's a range of, of different, both ownership and, and country of origin mm -hmm. issues that would have to be navigated. But, for example, if it came from an authoritarian foreign country, which is Australia's number one source of espionage, foreign interference and state-backed cyber attacks, that would be a relevant <coughs> consideration? It, it may be. And the possible relationship between some of those companies and the foreign government from the country that they originate from would be a relevant factor? It may be. Yep. Um, our United States counterparts have taken some specific actions to mitigate against this risk. Is the Australian government considering doing any of those? Senator, the, the Department of Home Affairs is looking at the security issues of connected vehicles. We, we have taken the opportunity, uh, personally, on the 20th of September, I met with a range of US agencies in the Department of Justice, Department of Commerce and in the White House about connected vehicles specifically, and Ms Ryan um, is talking to a range of different counterparts as well. That's right. Uh, Britt Ryan, Assistant Secretary, Technology Security Policy. As Mr Hansford mentioned, uh, we have been engaging closely with our US counterparts to understand the uh, implications of the proposed regulations. So we've uh, attended multilateral briefings and meetings with US counterparts on a number of occasions since the notice of propo proposed rulemaking was published on the 23rd of September. Uh, in particular, uh, on the 2nd of October, we met with the US Department of Commerce and the US Department of Justice. And on the the 8th of October 2024, we also attended a multilateral briefing which was convened by our US counterparts. And in addition, in addition to the United States, my understanding that the Canada and the European Union have flagged similar actions, not exactly the same as what the US um, has flagged. We discussed it with those partners. Uh, I understand that we have been engaging with um, a range of different countries on, on some of the, the issues that are arising from connected vehicles, um, including Canada in particular, but I'll just confirm that for you in the briefing. And just to clarify, Sen Senator, the US has put out a notice of proposed rulemaking, so that legislation or regulation is not in force, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. um, the other jurisdictions you refer to, it's a mixture of economic interventions, yes. tariffs in the case of the EU. Um, as well as national security interventions in some, some jurisdictions. So it's, yes, it's and the US has put forward tariffs as well. Indeed, 100% yep. tariffs, that's yep. right. What would the effect be if most or all of our like-minded partners took action on this issue, particularly in relation to Chinese manufactured EVs, and Australia took no action? It's 
I think that's speculation on the nature mm. of the action in Senator, depending well, on the Well, if tariffs. they're all putting up barriers or tariffs or other protections and we don't, surely Australia will become one of the dumping grounds for these vehicles? Well, it depends, Senator. Um, if different countries around the world take action, uh, it might, may lift the international standards. And I, I know our Department of Infrastructure is looking very much on the international standards in relation to road vehicle safety, um, which, which also covers cyber. So it may well have an end result to lift cyber security and security standards across the world as well. Right. Um, have you explained uh, these risks to the Minister for Home Affairs and Cyber Security? Have you briefed him at any point on this issue? Uh, yes. Um, and on how many occasions we've briefed him on this? Uh, more than one, Senator. Multiple occasions. We'd have to take the exact number of notice, Senator. Thank you, if you could. My memory is a couple of occasions, but yep. we'll, we'll check. If you could take the not, that on notice and the date that it is. Um, for obvious reasons, I won't name the make and model in this forum, but I've been told that the minister, at least previously, as his personal vehicle, drives a Chinese uh, electric vehicle. Does the department have any knowledge of that? I think that's a matter for the minister. Well, we just talked before about the national security risks posed by these vehicles. Perhaps the minister's made different arrangements. Perhaps the information given to me is not correct. Um, but you said that some of the risks that these vehicles pose is the uh, they can record the audio of the occupants who are driving around. Wouldn't it be of concern if the minister's driving around in a listening device? Well, I think there's a few assumptions in there that aren't necessarily borne out. Well, if I can be corrected, I welcome that. If at any point the minister has driven or owned a Chinese-made EV. I'll see what information I can get for you. OK, I look forward to that. Uh, when you can provide it. Um, Chair, that's sufficient questions for me and outcome one. I'm ready to move to outcome I told uh, Senator Patterson I had meetings on the 20th of September. It was the 2nd of October in the there US. There you go. And you had a follow-up with Senator yeah, Patterson. Whether the uh, Minister had an answer to the question you took on notice earlier about the Minister for Home Affairs personal vehicle. Yep. Uh, I have received some advice from the Minister's office. Let me just pull it up for you. Um, Immediately on being, on being appointed to this portfolio, Minister Burke informed his department and security agencies that he had a Chinese-made vehicle. He was given advice on the appropriate precautions to take and has taken those precautions. OK, that um, invites some follow-up questions, Chair. I'm sorry, I was really to move on to outcome two, but I think we have to persist with this for a moment. What vehicle does the minister drive? I have to take that on notice. I don't have those details. What mitigations has the minister taken to protect himself and the Commonwealth from the security risks of driving a Chinese-made EV? Again, I'll take that on notice, but repeat the point that he has taken the precautions that he was advised to take by his department and security agencies. Does that include not plugging his phone uh, into the vehicle? Again, I, that, that level of detail I'd need to take on notice. Does that include not driving the vehicle to any sensitive uh, locations? I'll take that on notice. Uh, we just heard from Mr Hansford earlier the large number of national security and cyber security risks posed by these vehicles, including that they can listen to the occupants, that they can film people outside the vehicle where the vehicle is travelling, that it can track where the vehicle is travelling, that it's a risk to a mobile phone that is plugged into the vehicle. Is it really appropriate for the Ministers of Home Affairs and Cyber Security to be driving a Chinese-made connected electric vehicle? Well, again, um, immediately on being appointed to this role, the Minister sought advice from his department and security agencies and he has taken the precautions that he was advised to take. So but I guess what that would mean is that, subject to taking those precautions, the security agencies and the department had no other concerns. Mm, OK. Um, well, I'd rather hear that from them than from you. Um, but just to be clear, our closest national security partner and ally, the United States, regards the national security threat posed by these vehicles as so grave they've effectively banned or proposed to effectively ban the importation of these vehicles into the United States for use by anyone, let alone a minister in a national security portfolio. Are there seriously mitigations that can remove this risk? Well, it would seem, according to security agencies, the answer is yes. Right. And, and what's the basis of your confidence that that risk can be eliminated? If, our, if the, our American friends think that the only way to deal with this problem is to effectively ban them from the whole country, how does the Minister for Cybersecurity driving around in a Chinese listening device uh, protect Australians? Well, perhaps you don't 
share this view, Senator, but I have confidence in our security agencies uh, and the advice that they provide to ministers. The, the dominant provider and manufacturer of these vehicles is China, and they regard the threat so serious that they have banned these vehicles that they themselves make from sensitive national security sites. No one would know more about these vehicles than China, and they regard it as such a national security threat that it shouldn't be allowed near sensitive sites. Well, um, again, this may be a curious position for us to take, Senator, but we take advice from Australian security agencies, not from Chinese security agencies. Or from American security agencies, apparently. So it's your evidence then that our national security agencies don't agree with their American counterparts about the national security risk. I haven't said vehicles. that. What I've said repeatedly is that <coughs> Minister Burke took advice from his department and Australian security agencies and has acted in, in accordance with that advice. And I think that's the appropriate action for any Australian minister to take, not Would to go to overseas countries looking for advice from them, but to seek advice from Australian departments and Australian security agencies. Wouldn't the most prudent course of action be to put it beyond doubt and just not drive a Chinese-made connected vehicle? I think the most prudent thing for Australian ministers to do on national security matters is to rely on the advice of Australian security agencies, and that, that's what Minister Burke has sure they, done. I'm sure they'd be glad that the ministers followed their advice, but I'd, I'd be willing to bet they'd be even more comfortable if they knew the minister wasn't driving one at all. Well, I'm, I, I'm not aware of them having advised him to not drive that car. No, no, we well, weren't you? aware at all until a few minutes ago no. at all about well, him driving I've, this vehicle. I've told you, I've told you that... Minister Burke sought advice from his department and security agencies. He's acted in accordance with that advice. I can only assume that if, they, if their had, advice had been to stop using that car, then they would have provided that advice and he would have uh, acted in accordance with that. Prior to taking up this portfolio, the Minister was still a member of Cabinet and as a result of that, privy to a whole range of confidential and classified information. Why didn't he seek advice as a member of the Cabinet prior to taking up this portfolio about any mitigations? Why didn't he put these mitigations well, in place before then? You're, you're asserting that he didn't, and I don't know if that's the case. What I, what I did was request an answer to the question you posed earlier, which was related to his vehicle use while he was a minister in this portfolio. And as you yourself have said, when he was appointed to this portfolio, he sought the advice mm. of national security agencies. Mm. I think it's pretty clearly implied with that that he had not sought their advice prior to that, when he was just an ordinary I'm, I'm member of Cabinet. I'm not sure about that. I haven't checked that. OK, well, can you take that on sure. notice? Um, how many other members of the Albanese <coughs> Cabinet are driving Chinese-made EVs? I'd, I'd have to take that on notice, and I'd question whether this is even the portfolio to ask that question. Well, uh, you'd be pleased to know it is, because the Department of Home Affairs recently became responsible for tracking Australian government exposure across the board uh, to connected technologies like these. Uh, the point I'm making is that the government fleet is um, owned by, serviced by, whatever the correct word would be, by a different department, and they would be the department that would have the sorts of records that you're seeking about the make and model of every minister's vehicle. There, I have checked this. It's the Department of Finance. There are no Chinese-made EVs available on the list of cars offered to members and senators through the lease <coughs> process. So has Minister Burke gone outside the Department of Finance process to arrange his own private vehicle because it wasn't available on the list? Oh, I, I think there's several leaps of logic in that. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, if what you're saying is correct, then what we're talking about here is Minister Burke's private vehicle rather than a, a fleet vehicle. I, I'm, I'm not saying that's correct. That's what you're implying. Um, but again, I'd need to get details of any of that before what, I can Why do you answer. think no Chinese EVs are made available through the fleet pro, uh, process? I don't, I'm not going to speculate about what another department, who I'm not here to represent, okay. um, what the basis of their decision making is. M Mr Hansford or any other officials, has finance ever sought your advice about appropriate vehicles to have on the fleet? Uh, choices available to members and senators? Uh, we, we are actively talking with the Department of Finance as recently as last Friday about uh, connected vehicles and the fleet policy, and so we are actively talking to them about that. Mm. But there are no Chinese-made EVs available on the finance fleet, are there? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to check. OK. There are, there, I can, what I can tell you is there is a wide variety of vehicles that are not available on... Uh, the fleet list, mm. presumably for a variety of reasons. Mm. 
So just to be clear, Mr Hansford, you or any other officials who have this in your state of knowledge, has finance ever sought your advice about national security risks of any particular vehicle or brand for the fleet offering to members and senators? Uh, not to my knowledge, no, Senator. No. Are there any other officials in the room who have knowledge of this? No, Senator. Um, I suspect if they're looking for threat information, that might be a question for the Australian Signals Directorate. Right. But the department is the holder of the PSPF. I presume this falls under the PSPF. Uh, procurement settings and standards as they relate to security fall with one, in one element of the protective security policy framework, yes. Right. So what input, if any, has the department had into the fleet choices available to members and senators through finance? Uh, I'll, I'll take that on notice, Senator. I'm not, I don't recall specific advice that I've provided, but my team may well have over time. Well, is there and I think, Senator, I think I'm sure the officials here will do what they can, but I do, I do think the better place to put those questions would be finance, because you could then be finding out about any agency that they may or may not have requested that advice from. Some of the agencies that you might, might be involved aren't even here and sit in other portfolios. Well, we may well direct questions to them as well, but um, this is the Department of Government responsible for providing security advice to other departments of government on things like this through the PSPF. Um, it would surprise me if, by happenstance, the Department of Finance has just arrived at a list that excludes a whole range of brands. Uh, you know, for example, uh, BYD is not on the list of Department of Finance approved vehicles to be made available for members and senators. Um, that's one China's made AV brand that's been excluded um, from that list. It could be just a coincidence, or maybe they've sought advice to someone, and that's why it's not on there. Well, they, they could have read the protective security policy framework and looked at uh, procurement and risk and looked at the levels of risk uh, and applied it to the fleet policy. Yeah, yeah, which obviously the Minister for Home Affairs didn't do when he bought whichever Chinese EV he's driving. Well, this entire discussion is speculative and I think you'll get better answers about why finance did or did not include certain types of vehicles by asking finance. And fortunately, they haven't appeared yet, so you'll have every opportunity to do so. Do, in the course of his duties, does the minister ever need to drive to any secure facilities to receive briefings? When he's in his electorate, for example, when he's out of Canberra? Oh, again, I'd have to take no, that on notice. I don't, well, I don't I keep track perhaps of... Perhaps I'll direct it to Ms Foster and your experience. You would have arranged briefings for ministers outside of parliamentary sitting weeks in their home electorates. They ever need to attend a secure facility or premises in their home state or city? So, Senator, I can only recall um, engaging with the minister or organising things in either the CPO or the electorate office. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's one occasion where we did need to have a sensitive discussion and um, that was done here in Canberra. Mm. You, yeah, as far as I'm aware, there's no electorate office that's set up to have... TS briefings, and I'm not even sure CPOs uh, are set up for that. Maybe some have them. Um, I'm aware that many, many don't. And certainly in my previous duties as Intelligence Committee Chair, I've had to go to secure facilities to receive TS briefings, I had to drive myself to those secure facilities to receive those briefings. I imagine a Minister for Home Affairs would receive just as many, if not more, sensitive briefings than a Chair of Intelligence Committee. So has the Minister ever had to drive himself to a secure facility for a briefing? That's what I just said, Senator, not to my recollection. OK. Could you take that on notice, please? I will. And if the minister had to do that, did he travel there in his privately arranged Chinese EV or was he conveyed by some other means? Understood, Senator. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. That's sufficient questions from me now for outcome one. Thanks.